Drop and Give Me 20 is brought to you by Germano Advertising Company. Drop and Give Me 20 is the podcast for military entrepreneurs. Each episode is around 20 minutes long, giving entrepreneurs a glimpse into the life of other successful military entrepreneurs, learning from their obstacles and gaining insight and inspiration. Podcast episodes focus on the stories, challenges, and wins military entrepreneurs have faced in their businesses. I am your host, Lindsay Germano, and thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning into another episode of Drop and Give Me 20. I am your host, Lindsay Germano, joined today with my co-host, Claire Yanta O'Mahoney. Hi, Claire. Hello. Those that are listening can't see us shaking our shoulders and being all like cutesy. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) We have two uh, really wonderful guests on today, Trisha Lake Gray-Smith and uh, Adam uh, Adam Bird. Adam is a, a very close friend of mine, even though I stutter on his name. And um, he is the founder of Heroes Media Group, all things podcasting, um, publishing. So if you are interested in being published, he's your guy. Trish is uh, one of my very good acquaintances too. We had met at a conference, a military entrepreneur conference, and we have um, stayed connected since. She is a photographer right now, headquartered in the Arlington area. Trish, is that right? Washington, D.C. area. Yep, Northern Virginia. D.C. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for coming on today to Drop and Give Me 20. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> We just, um, we, you know, we're talking a lot about the theme for this season and Claire, I am going to once again, throw the softball to you to introduce the season five concept to our listeners because Adam and Trish are our first guests of the season. No pressure guys. No pressure guys. Welcome. We're really so happy you are here. I'm echoing Lindsay. So when she and I were talking about this this next season and how to switch things up, um, I, I think we were chatting about things and, and maybe it was that we were doing a training session. She's one of my clients um, and colleagues, friends, one of my, my dearest rocks. And I was like, how are you? She's like, I'm fine. And I was like, no, but like, how are you really? Like, and she's like, well, actually, you know, and that's when like the real like stuff started to come out. And we were talking about how she felt like she wanted to maybe change directions a little bit with the podcast and how that could happen. And I was like, well, what if we really got people together and we asked, how are you really? Were you pushed past the obligatory? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, things are good. Like, no, really like tell us how you are because when we are honest and vulnerable and when we share with each other, the high times, the low times, everything in between, that's when we really connect and we grow as people. We grow individually and we grow together. So that was really um, kind of the seed that was planted in that session. We're like, how are you really? So, yeah, how are so you really? The f- at five seasons in, you think I'd get my S together. Um, Trish, I failed to say the name of your company, so I apologize for that. People are probably That's like, okay. okay, she's a photographer in D.C. Who the heck is she? Um, so Your Life Images, um, one of the things that I really like about Trish is She has, um, I don't know if you want to talk about this publicly. If not, we can just move on, Trish. But Trish shared some pivoting ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to start with you since I'm I'm kind of picking on you anyway. I don't know if you want to talk about that today. But that was kind of something that resulted from 2020 from this whole pandemic and, and hot mess of a year that we've been in. Yeah, so the, uh, one of the changes is um, name. So actually, yes, I was started off with So Your Life Images because that's our mantra, So Your Life. But because I do a lot of freelance work, uh, the name of the business is really under my name, so Photography by Trisha Legray smith but I still keep that mantra, So Your Life, because you know the, we cover everything. When we think about what we do for our clients, it's really documenting their legacy. And I know we talked about the pivot, Lindsay, about... You know, one of the hardest things this past year with COVID is um, helping people grieve when you're separated from loved ones. You know, social distancing, health requirements, um, the limitations you can have at memorials and funerals right now. It's really affected the way that people grieve, the way that people comfort those that are grieving that have lost loved ones. And that's an area that we never expected as a photographer to get into, but it's become something incredibly important. Whether it's to be there to actually document 
um, and photograph and video somebody's funeral or memorial service for those that can't be there so that you can share in and feel that they're there and that they're there to give the family support or creating custom sympathy cards. Instead of something that you just pick up at a store, something that actually encapsulates images that you have of that loved one, that friend, that person that was important to your life that passed, and then put the words, almost like a small booklet. Yeah. Um, or, but it's, re it's more meaningful than words that you didn't, that weren't from you. And so I know that we talked about that pivoting and, and it's one of those things. It's not something that I thought about marketing ever or talking about ever, but it was so important and people still come to, to me to do that. Um, and all the editing work, because you'll have photos of people that you took maybe with your phone or, you know, a disposable camera, things that you never, ever thought of that you would have to go back later and actually make into something that you want to put into a formal presentation or blow up to give as a gift. And that takes a lot of editing work to make it to that quality that a printer will take to make into that polished photo or that print mm -hmm. that you want to save yeah. for posterity. Yeah, I thought that that was a really interesting um, pivot because like you said, it wasn't something that you initially went into. Um, for those that are listening, both Adam and Trish are veterans. And so for, for them, I, I'm almost wondering like, has pivoting, has, did the military prepare you to pivot? And Adam, I'm gonna give that one to you. And you know, have you found that applicable in your businesses? Uh, ooh, I, I hear pivot. I think transition, right? Kind of same, <laughs> same thing. I didn't get to transition out of the military. I went from military to single parent to corporate America, all within a matter of a few weeks. So it wasn't like I didn't get to, you know. And this was this was mind you, this was a little over a decade ago. Oh wow! Um, now. <laughs> Um, I just realized that. Wow. Um, so it, it's, it's, but, but, you know, when you make pivots or transitions, even in business, you know, uh, we've been in business now for, for celebrating our fifth year this month. And, you know, I haven't been on the same path that, you know, I'm, I'm in a much different place than what I was when I started five years ago. There's been pivots, as you say, along the way where you try something, it doesn't work. You want to stay in business, you better switch it really quick and you better better move forward with it as a military, you know, to answer your question, did the military kind of prepare me for that? Yeah. It's like the adapt and overcome uh, kind of a mindset where, where something happens like, Hey, this really stinks. Well, you could sit there and complain about it and get nowhere, or you could lace up your boots and continue to march, you know, and that's really that what that part of it is. It boils down to a mindset and, and you have to have a positive mindset uh, to, to move forward with it. You can't, give up and you have to have that i'm not going to give up i'm just going to keep moving forward hint hint claire I'm looking at you because claire has been one of those folks in business that i've just seen her just drive 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 claire your thoughts yeah. on those yeah i think those are really incredible words to take to heart to um be able to adapt and to and to overcome i really think that that you know, that phrase um, is really something that I, I think I've, I've had to do. And I think a lot of us have as well. And I think it's all, it's also really important advice for those who are listening, who are maybe considering starting a business or, um, or you can even, you know, take that, that advice. It's not even, even it, it goes beyond what entrepreneurs needed to hear. It's also like, you know, we can sit there and complain or we can kind of like, said, like lace up those boots, get to marching, figure, okay, I'm not going to go this direction. I'm going here. I'm still going to move. Right. And even putting one foot in front of the other, even as painful as that may be sometimes and how slow that is, that's still movement. And actually reminds me, I just had this like anecdotal thing. Um, my husband and I were in Chile about two years ago and I don't know what, what, gave us the idea of like, let's hike this and climb this volcano. And I'm like, yeah, let's yeah. Do this. <laughs> so we got okay. some guide. Yeah, I'm going over you're gonna fitness see where I'm weirdos. This is all gonna tie in. You're like, where is Claire going with this? And so okay, let's do this thing. We had to meet the guide at like three in the morning. And anyway, it was it took twelve hours to get to the top of this mountain. It was insanity. And the hardest thing was is we were walking on scree which is something that you may or may not be familiar with. It's like this volcanic rock where 
you take one, one step and your foot slides back a little bit. You take another step, your foot slides back. So it's slow, painful movement. And my goodness, it takes you forever. But I'm kind of, I'm getting those images and I'm remembering how I felt like, how on earth are we ever going to get to the top of this dang thing? Can we get a helicopter to just take us down? But anyway, Adam, you're reminding me of, of that, just that tenacity and that drive and that it can be so painful. But hey, you know, we're going to move and we're going to pivot when we need to. So I, I think it's really um, profound advice to share. So now I'm going to ask our guests like the, the real question, which is like, how are you really doing with your businesses in 2020? Like not, Oh, everything's great. I had this pitch or I had this new thing that's releasing or I'm getting right. But like, how has business really been for you as a military entrepreneur, especially um, during 2020 with all the things that have been going on and I'm circling it back around cause you guys are all on my zoom screen and I'm gonna circle back down around to, to Trish, you know, how, how are you really doing in business and what can you share with our listeners that might be in the same boat as you, or might be celebrating the, th the things that you're celebrating? So uh, living the military entrepreneur life, um, not only am I a veteran, but I am a current military spouse and my spouse is currently deployed. And I have ki three kids that are doing online schooling at home right now. One is literally next to me um, and he is on his own, um, his own Zoom, <laughs> if you would mm -hmm. call it, um, conference. And he's got his headphones in and he's, and it's so funny, so it's a very similar format to this actually um, <laughs> with his class. Um, I am tired. I have to say this. It's so funny because I'll hear people, you'll see all these things that talk about self care, take care of yourself, you know, take some time out for yourself. I think I count those in terms of minutes. So I get excited when I can meet with my neighbors who are also working from home and we have our little happy hours. We're like, oh, yay, you know, at 4.30 when everybody gets off, we're all going to meet out on the front lawn, socially distanced, and we're bringing our wine. Yay, we'll have, and we'll have a toast. And that's our excitement. You know, that's our self-care for that minute. Or as soon as I get the kids to bed, I have three, and of course there are three different schools, so three different school schedules right now. Um, as soon as I get them to bed, just having that quiet time where it is completely quiet in the house and I just sit and I, and I just let the day wash over me. Yes, that is, you know, everybody talks about, oh, you should go work out. You should, you know, do, I haven't gotten to a yoga. I think I did my first yoga class and I usually do it every day. I finally did my first yoga class this past Saturday with my, and with an, my alumni group. And I was just so excited <laughs> to have, you know, I'm like, yeah, I carved yeah. out an hour for myself. <laughs> um, I need to say it, but prayers, positive vibes, all the things, whatever it is that you, uh, that you put out there for, for safe deployment for your, for your spouse. Yes, so I need to say that yes. first. Adam, how are you really doing? Adam, I, I've had the luxury of stalking Adam on social media and I know that he, he can go off the grid. He like, you will not see him. And he's like, Oh, I've been in the mountains. Like, well, you know. let's not go that far. I'm not, <laughs> in the mountains, but I mean, uh, you know, I, just a bear grills. You know, <laughs> 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 um, you know, it got busy. The business got busy because all of my stuff is online, right? So everybody's home. So they have time to do podcasts and write books and audio books. So for me, it was this whole COVID thing was almost like, I don't want to say a, a, a blessing because it, 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 it's not, it's a horrible situation that we're in, but I definitely got busy, busier, but at the same time I had to adjust because I'm used to traveling every four to six weeks. I commute back and forth between the DC metro area and Arizona. My son's in Arizona. He started his senior year. I got college applications. I got all this other stuff I have to deal with having a, a 17 year old. Um, and there was a, uh, there was a stretch there where I was home in, in uh, Pennsylvania for three months. I'm not used to being in one place for that long. I'm, I, I basically live for the last four and a half years, I've lived out of my suitcase. So when I was home for three and a half months, my wife wanted to kill me. It was just like, why are you home? Like, I, don't you have somewhere to be? I can't go anywhere. Like, what do you want me to do? Um, so it, it's been different. Short answer. I'm doing good. I, I'm loving life. I think, uh, I think any day above above ground is a good day and, and how you choose to react 
to situations that you really don't have control over anyway is, is, is on you. So uh, I would recommend choose the positive side of it, regardless of how much that situation might stink, be positive about it, find the good in it and, and use that to your advantage. I'm going to remember that when you call me after oh, drinking. Mute, mute her mic. Mute her. <laughs> <laughs> but this whole concept of like doing okay. And I'm glad I hear celebrations of businesses and I really do ce- celebrate with you and I love it. And for those that know me, if you've you know introduced your business to me, I'm, I'm following you on social media and all the things. So I love to follow Trish and I love to follow Adam and, and even Claire because I love to celebrate right? Their success. Um, that's also hard, right? And, and I think that sometimes my job is, is a lot of marketing, social media and, and Claire, yours is fitness. So I'm sure you get a little bit of this, but you look at what others are doing and you're like, how the hell are they getting, you know, six figures? Where, where are these figures coming from? And, and how are They're they? hidden you know? figures. It's hidden figures. Like, where are they? Yeah. You know? And so, Claire, I'd love to hear from you, you know, especially as a fitness um, a professional and somebody who looks at social media as a, as a direct way to grow your business because you offer that virtually. You know, how has this been for you? And you're a vagabond. I mean, you're a gypsy. So to, yeah. for, for you, I, you're, I can never figure out where you are. So um, <laughs> so for I'd real. love to hear from you on, you know, how, how things are for, for in your neck of the woods um, for business this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Definitely. Um, I was kind of grounded for a little while. Didn't, didn't travel a lot. Like Adam was saying, and I know Lindsay, you and I spoke and you're like, I need to get on a damn plane. I need to go somewhere. <laughs> Cause Lindsay also does a lot of traveling and commuting for clients and just also for fun. She's always got a backpack. So it was an adjustment at first. Um, but the gypsy life has started again. So I've been, <laughs> um, kind of moving around a little bit to see family throughout the country safely, thankfully. And, um, but I think it's been um, a, a lot of a lot of good that has happened, like Adam has said, um, where there have been some lifestyle shifts and things that have resulted where I've been able to focus more on my business, less on the runaround, um, kind of getting more clear on what I want my life to look like, mm-hmm. how I have the opportunity now to shape things a little bit more. I can get a little more clear about my plan. Um, so that's been good where I've been able to offer more things. I think my virtual offerings um, and getting people are, are looking more for the kind of virtual work that I have been able to provide for so long. I no longer have to s- explain what virtual training is that, yeah. you know, five, six years ago, people are like, what, what is that? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's a thing. So I don't have to convince anyone um, about that. But then Trish, as you mentioned, you've also said you feel kind of tired. And to be honest, I mean, I don't have children yet, but I feel that I, I'm someone that gets professional FOMO. Um, I grew out of like the social FOMO thing. Like I'm like, okay, if if you're going to that thing, I don't need to go. But if it's like a work thing or some kind of work related something, I want to be there. I want to be a part of it. I I want to, Ooh, they got that opportunity. What is that like? Can I have that too? Um, And I get very, I'm, I'm wrestling and I'm actually making some big decisions today about some opportunities. Is it worth it for me to, to get into those? And so you know, Trish, I'm feeling tired in maybe a similar but different way um, in, in trying to kind of navigate some of these things because as a result of how things have shifted, there are so many more opportunities that I could essentially do because they don't require me to, you know, get on the bus and go there in San Francisco. That's where I was based for the last couple of years or to get on this Uber. I can do it from home. So there's a mixed bag of blessings of things being slower, but also... Um, in terms of like how I can live my life, but then also feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed by all these opportunities and how on earth do I navigate it? So I identify with you both. Trish, we did this on a, on a, um, on a recording that we just did that will actually air after this one. So I asked this question to the guests and I'm going to come to you, Adam. You are a military, you're a veteran and you're a military sp- spouse and entrepreneur and all the things, mom and, and uh, friend, all, all of it. So we did this concept of like, if you're a new veteran, you're just, you know, transitioning out or um, getting ready to get out and you're thinking about starting a business, mm-hmm. what would your advice be to that person? Don't do it. <laughs> 
wouldn't quite. Oh, damn, damn. That. No. <laughs> the first thing I, I would definitely advise doing it on the side. Nice. Because what you really, especially if it's something that it started, like for me, it grew out of a hobby that grew into a passion that went into a purpose, which, and then ended up being the business. You know, I always call myself the accidental entrepreneur. Um, because you realize that if, especially if it grew out of a passion, that actual passion part, when you, when you become a business, you only work on it maybe 20% of the time, if you're lucky. Yeah. 80% is the admin queep or oh. the actual work of doing a business. And that is a lot of work. Yeah. So if you can't do it on the side, or if you don't love what you're doing enough to do that 80% of hard work on the side for just a couple hours each day, don't do it full time. I because love it. It's going to take more hours to, especially when your business is just starting, it takes much, many more hours to actually run a business than it does to do your standard nine to five. I, um, I have the luxury of seeing everybody on a zoom screen right now. And so as you're talking, I'm seeing Claire like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. And I see Adam like, yeah, yeah. And I'm doing it too. But those that are listening to this podcast, um, uh, via, you know, Spotify, Google play, Apple pie, whatever, however you're listening to your podcast, you couldn't see their like, so you should go and, um, and check out this video. We posted on all the things and rewind back to this mark, which I don't know what it will be after editing, but, um, and look at everybody's faces as Trish started saying that 80% of your day to day is in the, oh, the, in it, the nuances of running the business, Adam. <laughs> Your, your, you know, if a friend of yours comes up to you, he's getting ready to get out of the military, you know, he's getting ready to retire, or he's going into to be a veteran and um, says, hey, man, I'm thinking about starting my own business. You said, don't do it. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, well, I didn't get to finish. I, I wouldn't do it the way I did it. I, I had a corporate job and it, I woke up one morning and was like, done. No money in the bank, didn't have a, a business plan in place. I knew what I was doing because I was already doing it. I'd been doing it for three years, kind of part-time on the weekends anyway. And I was like, I'm just going to do what I've been doing part-time. I'm just going to do that full-time. That was my plan. Like, don't do that. That was horrible. Um, and it, 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 you wanna, if you want to cause more stress in your life, then by all means, go for it. But that's, that's not the way to do it. Have, have a game plan, seriously, and, and give your time to grow up to that. Write things out. Um, the first thing you should do is you should be create a business plan. If you don't know how to do one, find one, find somebody that in your network that does, or what, what I used was, a um, in the military, there's a, a, an op order. It's like a five paragraph op order. I just translated that into the business, uh, side of things. Same thing for us military people, right? And, and, and just created that. So it was, I was fortunate enough that I was able to do it a little bit quicker because I had been doing it part-time for three years. But um, if my, my advice would be, you know, I'm, I'm like, do it, go for it, jump. What do you got to lose? What, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you have to lose? Because one of two things are going to happen. You're either going to succeed and, and you're going to realize, hey, this is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to keep doing this. Or uh, you can fail which there'll be a lot of failures, which is fine uh, as long as you pick yourself up and you grow from it. And, and then from that, from failure, you're either going to learn, I don't want to do this. This is not what I thought it was going to be. Or you'll go find and, and do something else. So for me, I'm like, you know, you can't just sit there. You're getting out of the military and you want to start a business, then jump, do it. That's it. Jump. I think that's really good advice. I, I think that something that I need to remind myself is that this, this concept we were talking about earlier, we can pivot. We don't have to be stuck in this thing forever. You know, the first iteration of the business is not going to be what's like on the tombstone. And we have to adhere to that. Like we have the freedom to be able to choose and to say, I know that was cool. Actually, this is kind of calling me now and, and go over there. So I think that gives people a little bit more grace, a little bit more um, more confidence to take that step because the first thing may not be what you stick with. And I need to remember that too. Sometimes I feel like, well, this is how I've done it. This is how I've always, I've always done it. And that's kind of our, an archaic way of thinking. Like it's, it's fine to kind of switch it up and to reevaluate, readjust and, um, 
And so I, I think you really spoke to that. And that's an important thing. I think that entrepreneurs, um, current entrepreneurs, maybe people who've been in the game for a long time and those people who are listening are like, hmm, this is all sounding pretty good. Like it, it's something that everyone needs to hear. It's never too late to kind of shake that game up and kind of decide like, ooh, okay. Like just as Lindsay and I had this conversation and she was like, the podcast, it's been like this. You know, how can we like, you know, zhuzh things up and kind of switch it up? Like, hey, it's cool. It's, it's possible. And there are some things in life that are permanent, yes, but there are many things that aren't. So oh, I just, I just like totally that. got into my head about it. And I mean, I, I spoke to Adam about this. I'm like, I don't know. Just, I don't know if anybody's listening. And he's like, you idiot, you know? And, and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and I, think, I think that way, and, and Adam brought up this, this concept of um, imposter syndrome. And... Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have experienced that, but I, I didn't realize it when he called me out because my first line of, of reaction is defense. No, I'm not, I'm not imposter syndrome. What are you talking about? I'm crazy. But then after like, I, so I, I lie and in, in business, you know, you, you learn along the way, which people's words are meant with love and in truly are positive. So I let that in after I um, snapped at Adam and then I realized like he was right. He was operating from a place of like, Lindsay, you're, you're like trying to help me. Um, so I'd love to hear if you guys experience that in your, in your lines, you know, this imposter syndrome of not either it's, it's in a way where you don't think that you have something of value or you're seeing other people of value doing it better, maybe on like, you know, Instagram and stuff. So I'm going to, toss that to Adam first since he was the one that um that brought it up to me and I didn't realize he was Adam you're right that's the only time I'm say that actually she said it twice and I wanted to point that out so I'm <laughs> glad that she brought that up again so thank you first off for that uh I want to thank everybody that made this possible um <clears throat> no but the uh the imposter syndrome you know it, it is something that that I deal with on, on for the longest time it was on a daily basis and, and now it's gotten to a couple times a month. I think it's okay. You're, you're human. We're not perfect. Okay. It's, it's going to happen. The trick is recognizing that, that it's happening. Everybody has a story to tell and Lindsay and I could, could uh, be talking about, this, the exact same topic, right? And explaining the, really in, in kind of the same way, but in our own words. And somebody could be listening to Lindsay and be like, oh, I, I totally get what she's saying. And then they listen to me and I'm like, that guy has no clue what he's talking about. Even though it's the same thing, it's just the way that we word it. If I look at Lindsay and be like, oh God, she's, she's on Instagram. She's doing this. She's blowing everything up and blah, blah, blah. I start, you start playing that in your mind, head games with yourself. What, what good is that going to do you? That's not healthy first off. And you don't know what that other person is doing or what they're going through. And quite honestly, it's none of your business. Focus on you. That's what you need to be doing. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, period. Okay. Thanks for listening. You guys, that's it. That's the, that's actually the end of the podcast. Thank you, Adam. Mic drop. Um, <laughs> Trish, awesome. you know, there's, there's a lot of photographers out there. Um, d- is this a concept that you've experienced this, this imposter oh, yes. syndrome? I mean, you, you know, you've seen how many photographers are out there. And when you, you're a female and you say that you're a photographer, the first thing that most people will think about is, oh, so you're a family portrait photographer. And that's actually not what I started off my, my business doing. Um, so when you take on, you know, I've done multiple magazine f- covers um, for national magazines. I, I'll see myself, um, you know, on a net, you know, all of my photos used in national campaigns for corporations, for, you know, different things, nonprofits. But I'll still have that doubt when, you know, the next big job comes up or some another big client hires me. I'll still have the doubt. Can I actually accomplish? Because I still have in the back of my mind that introduction when you first introduce yourself as a photographer and I don't qualify it with what I actually do and where I work and who my clients are in the following lines. That the next question is, oh, so you do family portraits. Are you going to be available like for Christmas portraits um, this season? And you know, that's, that question was, you know, again, that's that imposter syndrome is knowing that, no, I've, 
I've, I've done a lot of work since, since I've started. It's seven years in the business. And um, now I have the luxury of saying no to people or telling people they're going to have to wait because my schedule is full. And that's an awesome position to be in. <laughs> Um, or I just need to give myself just a little break because I would like a day off <laughs> during the week. Um, you know, that's a great position to be in. But it's amazing that I don't know what accomplishment it will take for me to know that, no, I'm, I'm good. I, I'm no longer the imposter. I'm actually there. I was muted for a second. Um, thank you both for that. You know, and when we first started recording, it's always the getting the wiggles out and everything, but this is the juice. And this is really what I wanted to um, recognize from our guests is that, you know, highly successful military entrepreneurs also feel the same feelings and processes that the other folks do that may just have started out or they were getting ready, you know, all those fears and the doubts and the how am I going to get business or how.